Oh yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this one, y'all. Uh, I love the first one. There were some issues with the game itself, in my opinion. They reused some textures. Uh, there were some boring areas of the game. Plenty of stuff that they can upgrade with the second game. But personally, loved the idea that that first game brought. Um, basically, you're you're part of a, a ch like a chain of islands. Uh, your your main continent is kind of exploring and trying to. Uh, essentially do what England did to America type deal, right? Colonize a little bit into this uh, island. And then you're going around as an envoy uh, to the native tribes and also fighting off giant creatures and bandits and all this other shit. And you get enraptured in a story and it was really good, really good. And it was one of the few games that actually, when I started playing it, I was kind of against it because I don't like my gunpowder and fantasy mixing. Uh, it's always been a huge turnoff for me. I just can't get into it. I don't know why. This is one of those games that actually introduced that idea to me in a way that um, I was interested in. And since then, I've actually had my own like uh, ideas and stuff as well for a uh, fantasy setting with some a little more gunpowder. You can ask Aaron. Aaron, uh, my buddy, uh, who's also in here every once in a while. He... It used to give me so much shit when we'd have ideas for creative things. He would purposely add two, two trigger words in there. He would add gunpowder just to fuck with me to see if I actually read it. Uh, and steam powder or, or yeah, steam power, excuse me. So like trains or something. And he would be like, Hey, let's, uh, he would just, like propose this idea to me. It would be like, Hey, let's do this world. I think we're like trains and elves. And you're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. He would trigger me just immediately immediately he loved it he loved it it was his way of getting to me but uh since playing that first game i've really come around to that idea so that's cool let's get into it welcome back to the world of greedfall let's go where adventure and political intrigue await at every turn your future is in your hands as you strive to survive amidst greed and corruption The year is 1231, three years before the events of Greedfall. You're in three years before the, so this is a, uh, a prequel. Native of okay. Tierfordy, and as this adventure dawns, it is the eve of the initiation that will see you become a Donegad, a sage, a guardian of your people's knowledge, and a spiritual leader. But just as you're about to complete your sacred initiation, you're abducted by... The fucking white man showed up. Strange warriors from Gakan, the old continent, and thrown into the hull of a monstrous tall ship. Fuck you, John Smith! After a long and arduous journey at sea, you disembark on the shores of Gakan and discover this foreign world where people have grown distant from nature and now war and conspire amongst themselves. You now seek passage back to your homelands. All the while, you must thwart the plans of the terrible man who kidnapped you in the first place. While Greedfall so this actually is going to be a reverse uh, idea here, what they're doing. So they're going to have it set up so you're coming from the new world that you were originally going to in Greedfall, and you're traveling back to the old world full of politics and all this other bullshit, and you get to explore that as a negative to this island, which is kind of a cool concept. Uh, I believe, oh, fuck. Who was it? Um, there was a good example of this, um, re in, in real life. Traveled to England. Who was it? I can't remember the dude's name. Squanto! Squanto! He eventually traveled to, uh, to England and from there returned to his native village in America in 1619. So that's a, probably a, a, something that kind of inspired this story uh, where Squanto went to where the, basically the colonizers came from, right? And uh, that's kind of an interesting idea. I like what they're doing here. Did you the enchanted island paradise of Tier 3D 
Greedfall 2 takes you beyond the island shores to the old continent of Gakan, yeah. cradle of the factions that struggle for dominance over Tiafredi. You will explore the crowded cities of Gakan and its various landscapes shaped by the different factions, Fuck cultures yeah. and traditions that have inhabited them over the centuries. You will have to decide where you stand when you inevitably become embroiled in their internal conflicts. But you will not be alone in your quest. You will quickly meet unique and memorable companions on your journey who may join your group. Discover their stories and make them a part of your group as you explore new realms together, forge meaningful bonds, or even romances as you get closer to them and learn more about their background. You are the author of your own legend, Donnie Gad. I, I gotta say, guys, this looks so... All right, so I absolutely love Dragon Age. And uh, this looks so much better than Dragon Age, the, the new one that's coming out. Okay, granted, you have some carpet-ass cobwebs from, like, 2004 there, but we're gonna ignore that, all right? Um, each person in the game looks like they have a culture. The animation is not cartoony, generic bullshit. It actually looks like they put some care into the world and made it like, I want to explore it where I feel like the new dragon age is just pandering to, I don't even know what, like, I don't even think they know what they want to do. It's bothersome though. Choose and master the path of the sage you want to be, whether through diplomacy, bargaining, stealth, or your keen uh -huh. sense of observation. <laughs> that was the worst sneaking animation I've ever seen, though. Stealth, or your keen <laughs> sense of observation. Your tracking vision may reveal clues really, in your environment. Use your talents, craft new tools, and get help from your companions to increase your odds of success. Of course, the use of force is always an option to adopt as you see fit. Oh. Readfall 2's all-new combat system hate those flying bastards. puts you in control of combat more than ever before. Use the tactical pause at any time. There we go. I love my tactical pause, baby. Oh. Time to stop the action and plan your group strategy, either on tactical pause or in real time. You can control all the members of your group and give them instructions using action points. So it's up to you to craft the perfect tactic to defeat your enemy. Change your combat style as you progress by drawing from the wide range of skill trees offered. Oh my God, there are quite a bit of skill trees there. Not a lot of skills though. Uh, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 per Okay, so, I mean, there's there's quite a few, actually. Choose the style that suits you best. Whether you're more of a melee fighter who uses traps, a range shooter with support spells, or even a master of poisons. You can even hone and develop your allies' fighting styles as well. Find the best synergies between your companions and overcome your enemies with the party that suits you best. Your destiny is in your own hands. We're playing this day one, guys. Greedfall 2 is a thrilling RPG that takes you on an unforgettable adventure where your choices shape the future of your group, your people, and the world. The story is yours to write, don't we get? Yeah, we're playing that day one, September 24th. Fuck. Is that Scoffest? God damn it. Uh, let me take a look here. September 24th. Oh, that's August. I don't think I have anything going on that day. I'm greedful. Two. Bam. Bam. That looks fantastic. I, I absolutely love what they did here. Uh, they made the world richer from what it looks like. Hopefully they pick, they fix some of those texture issues from the first one where they're not repeating the same textures or the same building styles throughout. Like you would notice with some of the palaces that were all set up the same, uh, stuff like that, that were kind of an irritant to how good the game was in itself. 
And, I mean, it's not going to be the most exciting game you've ever played, at least the first one, but it was very enjoyable to get through. I, I really thought so, at least. The uh, diplomacy options and, and stuff like that were very cool as well and a little bit more uh, thought out. And so I'm excited to see what they do here with the second one, see if they can do something uh, cool with it. 